I am back here today at the Farmington West Branch. That is a big bald eagle. These fish are generally going to be holding toward the bottom. We got one. Holy sh What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Connecticut Angler. If you watched my last episode, you'll remember that I was struggling to try and catch a trout in the waning days of January 2020. And I'm sad to say guys, that the calendar ticked over to February as of this morning. And I closed out January, despite some further efforts, without catching a trout. But you know guys, it really doesn't surprise me. As I mentioned in that last video, I've always fared very poorly in January and February. Significantly more so than any other months of the year. That being said, obviously I was hoping for a little more luck than I wound up with, but what are you gonna do? That's all part of it, right? But the bottom line here is I'm not gonna let that get me down, guys. If anything, that means that <laughs> I can't possibly do any worse in February, right? <laughs> no, but I mean, seriously, guys. February's a new month, and with a new month comes a whole lot of new opportunities. Let me go uh, make a couple casts here right quick. Anyhow, I am back here today at the Farmington West Branch. In fact, I'm back at the very same spot that you saw me fishing in my last video. But I am gonna change something up because for pretty much all of January, I was mostly fly fishing with nymphs. Nymphing is probably the most likely route for getting a trout under conditions like this. That being said, when I was making my last futile efforts yesterday at trying to get a trout before January closed out, I was casting the nymphs and I got around to realizing that I wasn't even really expecting a bite anymore. I've kind of gotten to the point over the course of a month of not catching any trout, of just kind of having lost confidence in that approach. I mean, it's a temporary thing. It's not like I'm never gonna throw nymphs again, but I think it's just important to kind of disrupt that pattern and change things up to get my head back in the game and wake me up again. And so I have put away the fly rod for now. I've gotten out the spinning rod, six and a half foot, medium light, four pound test, and I'm tossing these uh, zonker streamers. Now that's a pretty dramatic diversion from what I've been fishing with for the past month. And undoubtedly, tossing big streamers in the winter time is not exactly a high probability tactic, but it's the change of pace that I need, guys. So let's see if we can't start February off with a bang where January went out with a whimper. So I'm just fishing this streamer with the spinning rod. The streamer itself does have some large dumbbell eyes, um, but that's not really sufficient for the casting distance. 
that I'm looking to get with how wide this section of the river is. So I've added uh, a couple, I think size seven split shot. Uh, and those are gonna help me get a little bit more casting distance and also help this streamer stay pinned to the bottom. I'm fishing this slow and steady. Oh, I don't know if you guys just saw that. A fish just rose over there. Oh boy. Now this is a dilemma. I'm not far from my truck. I could go back to my truck, get the fly rod out, and start tossing dries. Boy. Do I just stick with what I came here to do, or do I go and switch it up? I'm, I'm not just gonna go and change up my tactic just yet. I'm gonna keep on tossing this. If I continue to see fish rise, then I'm going to consider going back and getting the fly rod. But for right now, I've just seen one isolated rise, so I'm not gonna go nuts just yet. I still have yet to uh, pick up a pair of waders to replace the hip waders that I was using before. I have several pairs of waders at my house. I even have a pair of neoprene waders in the truck, but they are all at present leaking, uh, which wasn't really a big deal to me in the summertime, but is definitely a big deal now that winter has set in. So I'm going to be getting my hands on uh, more waders soon, but in the meantime, I'm kind of stuck fishing from the bank here. But what I'm doing is essentially taking one big step along the bank, making a handful of casts from that position, and then taking another big step and repeat. And in this way, I'm covering all the water so that if there is a large hungry trout anywhere along this stretch of river, I'm ensuring that at at least one point, I'm going to put this streamer right in front of his face. Ooh, I think I hear what might be an eagle, guys. It would be really cool if we could get a glance at that. A hellacious zoom lens to get you guys any good footage of this eagle. But wow, what a beautiful animal. Tell you what, this would be so much easier with waders and they could cover so much more water. <sighs> well guys, I have spent quite a bit of time experimenting with the slow retrieve and 
Doesn't seem to have gotten the fish's attention. So I'm going to start picking up the pace a little bit, working these streamers a little faster. I don't know if I mentioned earlier, but I'm using a uh, brown woolly bugger because I'm actually running low on black and olive woolly buggers. I have a lot of larger streamers that I could have put on, some articulated streamers, some other big zonker streamers, but I'm trying to stick with something a little more innocuous. All right, next spot. This spot is deep. Seems very deep, actually. The water is also a little faster moving. Is this a fish? This is a fish, guys. We got one. Holy shit. Oh, yeah. Guys, this is a nice fish. This is a nice fish, guys. This is a nice brown. It's gotta be. Okay. Is my drag, oh, my drag really is that loose. Oh yeah, this is a nice fish, guys. This is a nice fish. Don't tell me this is a sucker. It's a sucker. Unbelievable. It is a sucker. Ah. <sighs> Well, there you go, guys. That's my big brown. Can you believe that, guys? The sucker ate that woolly bugger with a fast retrieve. Incredible, just incredible. I can't, I can't make this up. Fast retrieve with the woolly bugger. Finally hook in to a decent sized fish. And it is a sucker, a giant sucker. God. I don't know. I just don't even know anymore. Well, I'm gonna keep doing the same thing I was doing and maybe the next taker is gonna finally be a trout. I got another fish, guys. Maybe this is finally a trout. Oh yeah, it's fighting a lot harder, a lot more actively. This has gotta be a trout. Oh, come on now. This has gotta be a trout. Come on. Come on up. What are you? Come on up. Come on. It is another sucker. What is going on here? Oh boy. Well, that one managed to wriggle off all by itself before I could even uh, get it in the net, which is just as well. So, two casts in a row, we've gotten suckers, which is making me wonder if I haven't come up on a hole that's just filled with suckers. Um, you know, maybe that's a good thing. 
there could very well be trout mixed in with a big school of suckers. So let's keep working it and see what happens, guys. Well, maybe not, guys. Maybe there was just happened to be two really hungry suckers schooled up in the on the same feature beneath the water that maybe I just can't see. Maybe just behind a boulder or something. Well, guys, I think that pretty much does it for me. I'm done for the morning. You know, what can I say? I mean, uh, I guess this outing leaves off pretty much exactly where it started, which is with me still not yet having a trout in 2020. But admittedly, at least having something substantial to the net felt good. It really did. It reinvigorated me and I think it gave me a little bit more enthusiasm to push forward in the coming days of February. So I'm going to keep at it guys. Keep an eye out for the next video soon enough. If you enjoyed seeing me suck at trout fishing, wait, wait, wait. If you enjoyed the video guys, make sure to hit like. If you like what I'm doing out here, be sure to subscribe. I promise you, things will start to pick up as we get into spring. Folks, I actually didn't even bring the camera because I've been fishing all day and truly didn't believe that a fish was in the cards. And I came to this little spot here and it finally happened. On three rivers today, I started off at the Naugatuck. I fished the Farmington from the upper reaches to the lower reaches. I fished other spots here in the Pequabuck. Came up with nothing, not so much as a single hit. And I literally stopped at this place with maybe, I don't know, 15 minutes to just fool around, really not expecting much. Didn't even bring the GoPro. And this is where it happens. <laughs> there we go, guys. 2020. I'm gonna throw the line out a couple more times here, see if I can't get something further, but finally, landed a trout in 2020. Look at this guys, another one. Of course, of course. <laughs> of all places to have neglected to bring my camera, it was the last spot where I catch two trout. Oh, look at that, another brown. This guy's just on that. Olive Willy Bugger. So I got both of them on. Well, guys, I have managed to break off my Willy Bugger before I had the chance to get another trout. I had been working so hard for trout that I was determined to get my first trout of 2020 uh, on the GoPro and everything in a proper video. And hey, I guess you can't really plan these things. I couldn't be happier, guys two trout knocked them out and I'm thinking that this is going to be the beginning of a bountiful 2020 with loads and loads of trout to come I'm excited to bring you guys along anyway I have stuff to do so we're going to wrap it up we'll see you next time folks